YouTube. Welcome to another edition of Lori's Thrifty Kitchen Pantry. If you are new, welcome. I'm so happy to have you here today. If you like what you see, make sure to hit that subscription button along with the notification bell so that you know when I have new content out. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I'm so happy to have you back today. So today I am working on canning up the huge turkey that I got from the food pantry last week. I have, have it all pressure canned and pulled off the bone. I have my bone broth done and I'm going to be putting that in the jars with the cooked turkey. So I do have a video I will link down below where I show how to clean and pressure cook a turkey. So I, I will link that video down below. I already pressure cooked this. All I did was throw it in the canner with two boxes of chicken broth, some water, and some salt. That, that was it. And then I put the lid on and pressure cooked it for an hour because it was a huge turkey and I also had some turkey thighs in there with it that I just cooked at the same time so it, yeah it, it was a huge turkey it barely fit in the canner so I I pressure canned it for an hour to make sure it was nice and done and it's going to uh, cook cook in the pressure cooker for uh I'm gonna can it in the pressure canner for 75 minutes because I'm doing pint jars so I have most of my jars filled and ready to go I left a few empty ones so that I can can show you how to put it together it's the canning is such an easy process so I'm gonna go down the list of what you do write these steps down and then whenever you get ready to can something just go go down your list and check off each step that you do as you do it as so that way you you know that it will be done correctly so the first thing you do is make sure your jars are all washed cleaned and ready to go if you are doing something hot, you need to make sure that your jars are hot. So I usually just put water in my jars and water in my canner and turn my canner on and let everything heat up together. So so that's, that's just how I do it. But you make sure your jars are clean. If you're doing a hot pack, you make sure that, that your jars, lids, and rings are all hot. Uh, you don't need to sterilize the jars or lids anymore. I do still warm my lids up just to make sure that I get a good seal from that rubber on the lid. But other than that, you don't have to worry about sterilizing anything because it's going to be processed long enough that you don't have to do that extra step so uh, all right so jars cleaned warmed up if you have to warm them up lids clean lids and rings clean and warmed prep your food how whatever recipe you're using uh, make sure that, that your food's ready to go. Fill your jars with your your food. Always debubble. Uh, make sure that you get all of the air bubbles out. Wipe your rims with some vinegar or water. You can use a paper towel or I keep a jar with a cut up t-shirt in it in soaking in vinegar and I just pull a, a square out and use that to wipe my rims off and then throw it away. Uh, wipe your rims. 
get your lids on, get your rings on a fingertip tight. It may take you a few tries to learn what fingertip tight means for your fingers. Everyone's fingers are different. I've learned that my fingers aren't as strong, so I make sure that my lids are on and that my rings are, are on tight enough that they're not going to come off, but they're not on too tight to make the lid buckle. So you need to make sure that your canner is all inspected, that the, the if it has a rubber seal on, on the lid, that that's in correctly. Make sure that the steam vent is not plugged. Make sure your, your locking pin is working. Get the rack in your canner. Oh, even if you use an electric canner, you need something underneath the jars to keep your jars from breaking. So if you don't have a rack that fits in your canner, you can use extra rings and put those on the bottom of your canner and then put your jars on top of your rings. You just need something lifting your jars up off of the canner. You need water in your canner according to your canner's manual. Every canner takes a different amount of water. So always check your manual. Make sure that you have enough water in there that you're not going to run your canner dry and work your canner. Then you put your jars in. Put your lid on. Let it come up till you get a steady stream of steam. You vent it for 10 minutes. And then you put your weight or your jiggler on the steam vent. You let that build up to the correct pressure for your altitude. When you start hearing that noise from your jiggler or your weight, then you turn your your burner down so that it stays at, at the a nice steady jiggle and you set your timer for whatever you are doing if you're doing meat it's usually 75 minutes for pints and it's either 90 or 95 minutes for quarts i'm not sure which one i i never can in quarts so I always do pint jars that meat is 75 minutes for pint jars. Uh, at the end of 75 minutes, you turn your, your stove off. You let your canner sit and cool down. When the, your safety pin drops down and you the temperature gauge gets back to zero, you can take your weight off. You crack the lid. Let some of that steam and the hot air release. Uh, I usually do do mine about 10 minutes. Then I take the lid off and lift my jars out and set my jars on a towel on the counter to, to cool down and seal. So that that's really all there is to canning. I will type the steps out down below. So if you want, you can copy and paste and and print the list out. Uh, that's just just pretty much your basic standard step-by-step -step canning thing. So I'm excited to show you how to do the turkey. I should have enough broth to do my turkey plus maybe have a few jars of turkey broth. So, so we'll, we'll see how much I can stretch my broth, but let's get into the kitchen and let's get canning. All right, so back here, I already have these jars all done. They've been wiped and bubbled and filled and are they are ready to go so now all i i'm going to do is work on these charts right here all right got my funnel and i got my turkey here so i'm just going to fill my jars here 
movie back just a little bit so I can get up to my counter. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to fill my turkey jars. My jars, fill my jars with the turkey. You want about, and I do mine not quite to a half an inch of head space, so that way I have plenty of room for my turkey broth. The, this is so easy to do. Oop, there's a bone there. Sure, sure don't want bones in my turkey. If I can help it. But sometimes I do miss a little piece of bone. So I always check it when I open a jar to use. I always check the meat over very carefully to make sure that there's no hidden bones in there. So some people really pack the meat in their jars. I don't like to pack my, my jars like that. Mostly because I do small batch cooking and I just don't need a ton of meat in my recipes. So I just, I don't want to have a lot of food waste. So I just do a little bit of meat in my jars. So if I had a bigger family that I cooked for, I would probably pack my jars a little bit more full. All right, so I got that done. So now it's just a matter of getting the broth and the jars and debubbling. So make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Actually, let me move you up just a hair. There we go. I think that's a little bit better. All right, that looks better. And I'm just going to fill my jars with this beautiful turkey broth. Now, I did put this in the fridge overnight, and I skimmed all of the, the fat off of the broth. So this is just plain turkey broth. And now you want to make sure to debubble, make sure that your meat is all in that broth, and that the air bubbles are, are out of your jar. You can see that turkey broth really went down, so I'm just going to add some more of my turkey broth to the jar. I did get a little bit on the side there, so I'm going to wipe that off. And then you always debubble again, just to check your head space. Make sure there's no hidden air bubbles in there, and you can see it went down yet again, so I'm going to put just a little bit more in there. Not a whole lot, just a little bit. There we go. I think that's going to be good. The bubble again. That's good. All right, wipe the rim down. You always want to wipe your rim. It's a good chance to check to make sure that your jar is not cracked or chipped and that's ready for the lid and i i just have a clean tea towel over my jars just to make sure that no dirt gets in there before i get the lids on so so you don't have to do that and I'm debubbling. And I have to get some more broth in there. And probably a little bit more. That looks good. Bubble again. my 
really ring down. And that's just, I was telling you earlier about my char with my rags in there with the vinegar. So that really does help a lot with paper towel waste and expense. So it was just an old clean t-shirt that I was not going to wear anymore. So I just decided to cut it into squares and I just leave it in that char soaked with the vinegar and whenever i pull a rag out i squeeze the rag out into my um pressure canner so that way it's got enough vinegar in it so it's all ready to go when i put my water in there so so that that's what i do and it really does cut down on paper towel expense uh, if you are really frugal, you can just throw these in the washer and reuse them. But I have a lot of old t-shirts that I'm not wearing right now. So I just use it and then throw it away. And last jar. did trip so I'm going to make sure that I clean the sides of the jar off bubble really well make sure your meat is all in that good juice looks like I need a little bit more juice in there bubble again wipe my rim down get the plastic back on my bowl here rinse my hands off real quick And then we'll go on to the next step. Grab a paper towel. Bring my lids over. Grab my rings real quick. I'm going to go ahead and go over the rims once more just to make sure there wasn't any lint on them from my towel. There shouldn't be because it was just a tea towel, but you can never be too careful. You always want to make sure your rims are free and clear of anything that could keep the lid from seeing. All right. Done with that rag. And you have my little lid lifter here. Basically, you just take that out and place it on your jar. And 
in lids are a little warm so you need to be careful that you don't burn your fingers and I have one more wide mouth here so these go on fingertip tight I always start it backwards and then go forwards to make sure that it's on. And you see I'm not really wrenching it, but it's on. That one is not lined up quite right. There we go, that's better. And I haven't mentioned it yet, but I am using four jars lids today. I've had really good luck so far with these lids. They work really well. I've only had two jars that didn't seal, and I think it was a bad jar. I don't think it was had anything to do with the lid. I think it was the threads on the neck of the jar were bad. Ring on. Alright, I got to get some wide mouth rings and get these in the canner and I will be I will bring you back when we're ready to get the lid on and, and go on to the next step all right we are at the stove the canner is full I do have wide mouth and regular mouth lids in there you can do both at the same time the only time you adjust your your cooking time and pressure is if you have pints and quarts in there. These are all pint jars, so they're going to all process at the same time. So I have already inspected the lid. It's ready to go. So now I'm just putting the lid, lid on. I'm lining, lining the arrows up. And locking the lid in place. So now I have used this canner, who by the way, this her, her name is Ethel. So I have used her enough that I know right where to set my stove. So right now I'm starting her out on high. When we get a steady stream of steam come up from this this vent right here, I will vent it for 10 minutes. It's very important that you do this step. It lets your, your canner get rid of any unwanted air and come up to the correct pressure. So always do your venting for 10 minutes. When we come back after 10 minutes, I will put my little weighted juggler here on. This safety pin in the back will more than likely pop up by then. If it doesn't, it pops up almost as soon as I put the juggler on. And when we get up to 10 pounds of pressure, that will start doing a little hula type dance. I'll bring, bring you back so you can see what that looks like. And as soon as that starts moving and that's up to the correct pressure, I will turn my stove down to six. That's where Ethel likes to, to be. She does her best work at that number. So I will turn the stove down and I will set my timer for 75 minutes because I'm doing turkey. And most meats go for 75 minutes for pint jars so 
I will bring you back when we get our steady stream of steam. Okay, we have our steady stream of steam. I've got my timer set. The little safety pin in the back has popped up. So I will bring you back when I have the juggler on and it gets up to the correct pressure. All right, we are back. Here's what the juggler looks and sounds like when it's up to pressure. So it's just a nice steady back and forth. And I have the stove turned down that the, the temperature gauge is going to stay right on that mark. And I am now going to set my timer. I will set it for 60 minutes. When it gets down to 45, I'll, I'll turn it back and start it over again. And then when it turns off, it will be 75 minutes. I will come back, turn the stove off. I will let this cool down, uh, crack the lid for 10 minutes, and I will bring you back when it's time to get the jobs out. And we are back. This has been off. The lid's been cracked and cooling. Always take the lid off away from you. And, oh my goodness, this looks really good, y'all. Look at this. Looks like I did have some siphoning, but the jars look like they're okay. Look at that. Oh. oh my goodness, this looks so good. So yeah, sometimes it doesn't matter how careful you are. You just get some siphoning. But as long as your jars are at least half full of liquid, you can you can still use it and these these look really good so i think i might have just gotten some extra turkey broth with while these were cooking it's kind of hard to know how much juice to put in your jars how much you're gonna get with your turkey but these these still look really good I am very happy with these. And it looks like there wasn't a whole lot of siphoning, just, just a little bit. So, so my jars are, I think, are, are okay. And let me move you up. There you have it. Three, six, nine jars of fully cooked turkey in turkey broth. So I'm really excited. I have eight more jars ready to go in. Plus, I will have a big bowl of broth left that I can do some jars of just turkey broth. And there you have it. Canning is just that easy. So I hope if you have been afraid to try pressure canning, that maybe this takes away some of your anxiety. Uh, give canning a try. Run your canner with just water in it before you pressure can something. Learn what your canner sounds like, where you need to set your stove, walk through the steps, 
That way, when you are ready to can food, you will just breeze right through it and you'll see that there's really nothing to it. So I'm so happy that I'm going to have all that turkey on my shelf. I was blessed to get that turkey from the food pantry. So all together, I will have... 17 jars of turkey and probably four pints of turkey broth. So, plus I had a meal out of that turkey meat. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm just really happy that I will have this on my shelf. So, that concludes this edition of Lori's Thrifty Kitchen Pantry. Thank you so much for spending time in my kitchen with me today. As we went on this canning adventure, hopefully that took away some anxiety you may have about canning. I will type out the steps that you follow when, when you do a pressure canning session. The, the steps are pretty much the same. The food preparation will be different depending on what it is that you're canning, but the steps will remain the same so just follow the steps follow the correct cooking time and pressure for your altitude and you will be great so there there's really nothing at all to be afraid of i appreciate each and every one of you thank you so much to all of the the new subscribers that that came in this last week from southern prepper one I am just so blessed by each and every one of you. So thank you for spending time in my kitchen with me. And returning subscribers, I am always so happy to read your comments and catch up with you guys. So, so you all really have blessed my life more than, than what you guys realize. So thank you for being who you are. Be happy. Be safe, be blessed, and I will see you all on the next video. Bye!